மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க thank you so and welcome back so in the last lesson we saw how lights can go down seemingly very easily in the, in the london and in this game we're going to see kind of the the counter to the line that we just saw and see how a very strong grandmaster uh wei yi from china uh met this and um and had a very nice win in uh in in a blitz tournament against uh, another grandmaster bogdan daniel diak um who I actually haven't heard of before not sure if I'm saying that name correctly but let's get into the game uh d4 knight of 6 we're going to see a very similar line just back four d5 e3 c5 and as i had suggested before uh after knight c6 knight f3 it's important to uh to have this move order instead of the move order with c3 uh rather than knight d2 so if uh if way ye were to go wrong and play something like knight f3 knight c6 and c3 this would allow the queen b6 line so he plays uh he plays knight d2 knight d2 first which is completely fine and he gets to this position and now um black goes for the same idea queen b6 and now we're going to see the differences uh between this position and uh what happened in the previous game cuz white has an additional option here as the rook has uh has some squares to move to a uh, queen take b2 is not uh a game ending threat um which means white can go ahead and play this move d takes c5 uh now after t d takes c5 it's going to go into some potentially very uh, crazy territory where black now has a choice whether to take back on c5 or go for perhaps a more ambitious queen take b2 now in this game black played queen take b2 which we will certainly analyze but i do want to take a moment and show queen takes c5 um uh, this move is not uh not the best move and actually gives white a very simple position very easy middle game to play uh in terms of completing development and uh and putting the pressure on black because the queen on on c5 is a bit misplaced um very potential target in the position and the best move for white to play here looks a bit odd at first but it's to play pawn a3 with the very simple idea of potentially playing pawn b4 and then eventually pawn c4 just gaining space on the queen side and um there's actually a, a game which featured this line which i don't have included in the tactics but i guess i'll go ahead and uh, and just show uh one moment from it uh it was a game between alexander shimanov and kim kirwa from the chicago open a few years ago uh shimanov had the white pieces and his opponent played knight h5 uh which aimed to uh maybe do the same idea that we saw in the previous game trade off the uh the knight for the bishop but in this position shimanov had a uh, a very strong move which he actually didn't play in the game but it's a simple uh simple and straightforward tactic to win a pawn so i would encourage you to pause the video and find the pawn winning move for uh, for white in this position so the best move is not to move the bishop but rather to go for the counter attack and play this move knight to b3 which uh not only attacks the queen but in, it unleashes white's queen to uh to attack the d5 pawn black's queen only has one safe square on b6 and then white can go ahead grab the pawn um now this does allow the trade of knight for bishop but white is very happy in this position just to be up a clean pawn and uh more central control more development so just one example of how black could uh could be worse from very early on going back here uh let's go back to the uh what happened in the game after queen take b2 um looks like white is mm white structure on the queen side isn't that impressive as c5 looks very weak um but the main plan here for white is not to worry about holding on to material it's about to activate as quickly as possible and also try and uh take advantage of black's perhaps somewhat misplaced queen on b2 so the move to play here is rook to b1 uh putting the question to the queen and here the queen has a has a couple options um actually three options between queen take a2 queen a3 and queen c3 um i know queen take a2 wins another pawn but uh it is a bit greedy and white could follow through with bishop to b5 and uh, i think white is doing very well here we'll actually see a game uh or a example tactic in this later on in the course um in this game black played queen c3 which is 
perhaps a, a more annoying move for white to deal with, as it pins this knight, also attacks the pawn on c5. Um, now, I'm, I guarantee that way e was still in preparation here. Um, if you're playing this line with white, you should probably be uh, somewhat prepared. And way e played, uh, played the next move, uh, probably the, the most natural move in the position, bishop to b5. Um, not defending the pawn, but rather just focusing on the completion of development. And the plan for white is that even if this pawn is someday lost, white will have such good pieces and such great pressure in the center that there will be compensation for the pawn. So just to illustrate one line here, um, in this game, black played e6, but uh, just to illustrate what happens after queen takes c5, white would be very happy going for this move pawn c4 to... Uh, to try and further open up the center. Now the, the position is still quite complicated, but white has ideas of knight b3, probably just completing uh, completing development with castling, and then going for some later idea of knight e5 or knight d4. So very rich position, which I, I would encourage you, if you're looking to play this line, I would encourage you to analyze it uh, much more deeply. But going back, uh, black delayed capturing on c5, played pawn e6, and then way e, castled in this position. And now the next move from black looks a little bit strange. Uh, black played bishop to e7, but it's somewhat logical just going for kingside castling. Um, I do want to mention that if black were to capture on c5, there would be uh, some ways that white could try and grab the initiative before black completes development. For example, still if queen takes c5, uh, there would be the somewhat explosive pawn c4, in the words of Grandmaster Ben Feingold, and, uh, and then ideas of, of furthering the position with knight b3, basically what we mentioned earlier, um, just, uh, just increasing the pressure, trying to, uh, to prove compensation. And here black is, uh, is, is perhaps not that comfortable as a queen is a, a very big target on c5. So to illustrate another line, if bishop takes c5, uh, white could then play this move, bishop e5. Very nice worth for the bishop, where it can't be taken because uh, the knight is just pinned to the king. And then black has to move the queen to uh, to some other square. And this now allows white to play c4 with uh, with even more initiative in the position. White has a threat of bishop take f6, g take f6, and then taking on d5. So black has to... Uh, Black has to deal with uh, a number of things here. Also, knight b3 is very present in the position. I think white has more than enough compensation here. So going back, that's uh, probably why black played bishop e7. He didn't want to face all these uh, lines if he were to capture on c5. And now way he continues with knight b3, uh, reinforcing the pawn on c5, also opening up his queen to uh, perhaps be a bit more productive in the position. Uh, black went ahead, played bishop d7. This is perhaps the first uh, big mistake from black, even though like, uh, even though bishop d7 looks like a, a safe and, and comfortable move, it uh, it was a bit slow, and black probably should have castled uh, rather than played bishop d7. Uh, just briefly, if we look at what happens if black castles, it's still a very complex fight as uh, as his pawn is still a bit weak on c5. The best approach for white would be queen d3. And I would suggest that viewers take a look at the game between Korobov and Bluvom, um, which we're not going to cover in this course, but uh, it's it's an interesting game. White did end up winning after what was played knight e4. Uh, Korobov played this move. Bishop takes e6, b takes e6, and knight e5. Still a very complicated fight. But of course, there's ideas of uh, of taking on c6 and also ideas of f3, and white is uh, is attempting to to still dictate play in the position. So going back, let's focus on what happened in the game after bishop to d7. Uh, Wei Yi goes ahead and plays knight f4, um, trying to exert even more pressure uh, in the position, um, putting the question to the knight on c6, and this is where black made a pretty severe blunder as it uh, it allowed white to continue initiative for many moves going forward. Uh, what black should have done, again, is just castling, get the king safe. But what black did was uh, was taking on d4. And the problem with this is that after knight take d4, uh, black doesn't really have time to castle. If we look at what happens if black castles in this position, it walks into some uh, some pretty devastating tactics 
after the simple bishop take d7, knight take d7, and then rook take b7 with a skewer on the seventh rank. And white is actually winning material here, because if black defends the knight with a move like rook ft8, then white can play c6 and uh, just picking up a minor piece. So going back, um, black kind of lost his, his chance to castle and decided to take on c5. And I really have to admire the way that Wei Yi played the rest of the game, because at no point did he give Black the opportunity to castle. And this is, uh, this is a really important concept. If you're able to keep your opponent's king in the center and keep drumming up some tactical threats in the position, or even play restricting moves, then you can, uh, you can make your opponent's life a lot more difficult. So what was played is bishop take d7, knight take d7, and then rook take b7, just winning back the pawn. Now it's equal material. And because the rook is putting pressure on the knights, the king is tied down to the knight, which means uh, black still can't castle. Black went for uh, for this move pawn e5, which uh, which opens up another very strong opportunity for white. And now I want you to think in this position and try and find the best continuation that white can play. So the next move from Wei Yi is, uh, is very impressive. And it's the type of move you kind of have to rely on intuition if it's a blitz game. Um, but it's also a type of move you can rely on calculation. The move being rook take d7. Uh, relatively forcing move. Um, as it is a captured, it, it is a capture and, uh, and it does give black perhaps a few options. Black, uh, can consider taking on d7 or taking either minor piece from white. Um, now I do want to show that if king take d7, uh, Black's position falls apart really quickly, even though Black wins the exchange. White uh, can start gobbling up some pawns after queen g4. The king actually doesn't have anywhere great to go. Let's say king goes back to e8, then queen take g7. Very nice uh, uh, capture of the pawn, attacking the rook, attacking the pawn on e5. And then after rook f8, White can take the pawn on e5 and just have a, a much superior position, despite being down the exchange. Uh, if I'm counting correctly, white has two pawns for the exchange and just such a, a great uh, a great position with black's king very badly placed on e8, having almost no shelter. So going back, uh, after rook take d7, uh, Wei Yi's opponent took on d4. But now we'll see that uh, the, the rook stays on the board and Wei Yi simply plays rook to c7, keeping initiative, attacking the queen on c5. And uh, still, black has no time to castle. After queen b6, white simply takes on d4. And this is just a, a, such a simple move, improving the position further for white, opening the, the e-file. And again, black cannot castle because the king is tied down to defending the bishop. And this is very, a very common uh, scenario, not only in this game, but in other games too. If the king is tied down to defending a piece, then it can be difficult to... Uh, to find safety for the king. Um, so going forward in this game, king f8 was played. Pretty sad move, as now the black rooks can't become, can't become connected. And uh, from here, white just continues building up the advantage. Queen f3 played, attacking the pawn on d5. Rook to d8, rook e1. And we can see some very nice coordination of the white pieces, not only targeting the bishop on e7, but there's some also some x-ray vision against this f7 pawn. Um, black has a lot to worry about. So bishop f6 was played. And now queen h5. Another nice move. Threatening mate in one. Black had to defend with g6. And now um, now the way that Wei Yi finished off the game was, was pretty incredible because it was a, a, a pretty aesthetic tactic. But he played a move here which uh, actually allowed a position for black where white pretty much has only one winning move here. Um, if white doesn't find the winning move, white's still better, but it would take some, some more time to win. So I want you to think in this position and find the absolutely crushing move for white. Okay, so the move is... Actually, before I say the move, I will say it's, it's force mate in three moves. Um, now, I didn't want to say that earlier because the force mate is not a check. And uh, when you think force mate, you usually think uh, ways of, of checking the king. But in this position, the move is uh, 
is, is very aesthetic. Queen to e5. Um, and th this bishop is not only pinned to the king, but it's pinned to the rook. So it's pinned in two different directions. And black just has no defense here, as white is threatening simple capture on g7. Uh, white is also threatening queen to e7. Um, and then after f6, uh, I'm not sure what happened. It says black resigned here. Uh, it seems a bit weird to, to play a move and then resign. But of course, white is just mating after queen e7 and then checkmates uh, in the king's face. So I hope you guys enjoyed that game. I think that was a, a great demonstration of not only some very nice opening preparation by a very strong grandmaster, but uh, the ideas in the middle game, how to basically restrict the, the king from castling and keep the opponent's king as a constant target in the position, really allowed light to, to build up massive initiative and uh, goes to show how uh, how brutal the position can be if uh, if you can't castle. And um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. And, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.